is how much has been spent so far. And it, this seems to have been going on longer than Brexit from uh, memory. So, uh, how, how much have we been spending on the various, the council's been spending on the various consultancies and reports and this for planning and that for planning? Do you have a, a rough order of, of merit for that? Um, I don't have the exact figures with me tonight, but they were in the last cabinet report that we um, presented to the cabinet on, on that. So we have been spending money on um, consultancy support for the council in considering this project. Um, and we also had um, agreement to spend some money on dealing with the landfill issues that we've got in that area when we need to do that. Now we've not needed to spend that money today, so that money is still there. So I can give the committee a detailed breakdown from the last cabinet report, but I'm sorry, I don't want to hold the fine uh, detail in my head. Oh, okay. Right. Now I'm sure there are a number of people who will have questions or dates that they want. Phil, I'm going to keep you uh, to the middle. Time. No, to the middle, not the end. Uh, yeah. the so the lady at the back holding a piece of paper. There we go. Thank you very much. And I'm very, very cool. I'm very nervous. I'm very frail. I feel I need to get home soon. Thank you, darling. Shall I stand up? Yes, why not? I tell you what, could you just say your name as well? Uh, so, so you'd be famous. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. I'm Stephanie Miller from Upton. I have it on good authority that the council will have to pay £495,000 to Kingdom for prematurely selling their contract with them. That's half a million pounds, all but a few thousand. In, this, in view of this, would you please tell me and provide an update on the funding of the Hoy Lake Resort? Well, you, you don't know yet. But will the funding and phasing phase plan include a financial clause that will mean the council will be required to pay a compensation to Nat Nicholas Joint Venture Group and Celtic Manor in the event of the council having to default on the project and thus burying the people of Whirl who are already buried under a mountain of debt because of this project will continue to bury them under a debt of unimaginable proportions basically just as big as the profit itself, the project itself. And can we have it in writing, in the event of default, that those cabinet ministers will be responsible for the debacle and be held accountable for wanton delegation of civic duty for the, to the people of Wirral? Within that, there are a series of good points. I'm sure David's going to answer them. Uh, apparently, he's getting his notes from Stuart. Um, interesting. Uh, uh, could you, um, Stuart, mention as a future leader of the council in the paper I saw? Uh, David, just in terms of the contracts we may or may not have entered into with Celtic Manor and, and the developer from Swansea, I think he is. Uh, can you reassure us that there aren't any uh, callback, as the ladies mentioned about to Kingdom? Um, there's no severance costs that the council would have to pick up if and when it changed its mind around this. Um, I'll, I'll try and answer those questions. So, for the Celtic Manor Resort, the council has entered into a development agreement with the Nicholas Joint Venture Group. That development agreement has certain <coughs> terms and conditions in it and um, if the council was to breach that development agreement then it could be open to legal challenge by the oh, Nicholas Joint. Oh, that's 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 Shame on having that. Who voted for it on the council? Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I think I can positively tell you now that Colin is definitely awake and paying very close <laughs> attention to this. Keep, keep going, David. 
So uh, th there would be those clauses in there. So if there is a breach, then the council could be open to that legal challenge. Now those types of terms and conditions are normal in all types of development agreements and there are breach conditions on both sides, okay, um, from there. At this moment in time, we have the development agreement, we're proceeding as a council in line with that development agreement and so everything is progressing in terms of uh, due process. Um, depending on what decision members may make, um, at Cabinet, if that's the decision-making process in due course, we'll obviously then need to look at what the implications of that may be. And yeah. just, to help, just to help us in terms of the point that's been made about Kingdom, so who signed the development agreement and when? Um, I'd have to get you the exact date for that, um, but the development agreement was signed between the Council and the Nicholas Joint Venture Group after it had been through June. Well, as this is probably our last um, meeting of us, and we need to find a way of getting some of those answers and being able to share them. And I, I don't know who it, it is that will do that, but we'll have a talk about that because we certainly want to make sure, given those questions, everybody that's attending this meeting should actually find the answer to that subject to being commercial and all that sort of stuff. Okay, intro, good start everybody. Right, any more questions? And I'm going to try and give it to people who didn't ask questions on the previous item to begin with. So, uh, I think it's the gentleman there holding a piece of paper up. Yes, yes. My name's Ken Barnes I'm, uh, from Pensby, uh, and I've got a couple of questions to answer. They're only short questions. Okay. Um, the first one is, in recent media articles and on their website, the Hoylake Golf Resort developers have stated that the Golf Resort Link Road will not be funded from the public purse. Yet, in the report to Cabinet of December 2017, it was stated that the link road would be funded either by a grant from the Liverpool City Region or by the sale of the public, or publicly owned land <coughs> for the resort. Please could you clarify how the golf resort roads will be funded? Question two is, please can you provide an update on the pro proposed proposal to offload municipal golf courses to private management companies? <coughs> How many companies have shown an interest in taking on the courses and when are they likely to be transferred to the private companies? Thank you. Okay. And we just need to, sometimes this will become entangled because it's not quite the public question time, the general public question time. It's specifically about the rural golf resorts at the moment, or really like golf resorts at the moment. Uh, but if you have got any information, David, on what's happening to the municipals, that will be quite interesting, especially as, of course, Hoylake Municipal will be intimately impacted by the golf resorts, one presumes. So, have you got any answers to that one, David? Um, unfortunately, I've not got any answers to the municipal. No, 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 no. no, no. Let's be absolutely fair. You know, it's the last meeting, I'm going to try and maintain my fairness till a, till a bitter end. Um, it's, that, that is David's job to do. Uh, David's come along to answer a question about the golf resort. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe he knows stuff about Kingley. I know David knows some loads of stuff about loads of things, but wouldn't necessarily be considered the council expert on something. But the golf resort, if you want to cover that. The we golf resort is here, the question about the golf clubs. Yeah. The, the municipals that we'll make sure an answer yes. is provided. Yeah, yeah I think that would okay. be best, Jeff, okay. if we could, because that's not my area of uh, responsibility. Um, in terms of the link road, um, I'm not quite sure why the Nicholas Joint Venture Group has said oh. there's no public money going into the road, because as we did report, as you've rightly said, um, to the last uh, Cabinet meeting, um, that the link road um, has an opportunity for a number of sources of funding one could be through grant from the Liverpool City Region as a transport scheme. 
um, or the other alternative approach is to recycle the capital receipt that the council would receive um, from the golf resort project into part funding that road and that's my understanding of the position at this present time so I, I don't know why the Nicholas Joint Venture Group said there was no public money required for that because that's not my understanding of the position. So that is so so the 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 Look, okay. 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 to be fair to David it wouldn't be David won't be able to give an answer about why people are being misled by uh, the Joint Ventures website but I'm sure he will go back and speak to them and make sure that it's corrected. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. And the other, just a question from me, because um, I can't be quiet for more than two minutes, is everyone seems to be quoting in the council press release or comments that it's 160 houses that are being put. I'm sure I saw, was it 140 houses plus 60 flats? Or was it 160 houses and 40 flats? So it's actually 200 dwellings, isn't it? Right, just, just to clarify that, it is a maximum of 160 executive houses, and then there are 40 apartments which would sit next door to the hotel. So it is. 200 dwellings. So that would be 200 dwellings, yes, but with that split. Yeah? Yeah. So, you know, to say 160 is a bit disingenuous because it's 200. Yes, the, the 160, just to clarify, is the minimum number. Minimum. 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 Thank you, Jeff. The, the maximum number of houses needed, and that's in their calculation for the enabling development. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Maximum. That's maximum. Right. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Not yet. Not yet. There was a lady behind you with glasses who was trying to ask a question a little bit further. And before I'm trying to balance it all off, I'm conscious it's all over on this side. Does anyone want to grab a question over here? Just. Yes, the lady there. Yeah. Um, the Hoylake Golf Resort is to have a 90-bed hotel and the developers have been, been keen to emphasise that the Celtic Manor in, um, in Wales only started off with 70 beds. Now it's got four hotels, seven restaurants and a 5,000 delegate conference centre. They say of Hoylake, who knows what can happen here? Can you confirm if Celtic Manor see the current resort proposals as just phase one and have they indicated that they plan to expand the resort in the future? Yeah. Yeah. My understanding is that as they see the Celtic Manor resort at the moment, it has um, currently planned with the size of hotels, the houses and the apartments and, and the golf courses. There are no plans that they have, as far as I'm aware, to uh, expand what they've got there. And I, I, I suppose, again, because of Mr. Fairness, uh, in order to do that, it will have to take off and be incredibly successful. Most of the people I've spoken to about this can't, um, can't see how they make it stack up. But that's a different, well, I suppose, unless you get 26 million from the council, it would be odd. Uh, and, and then, more questions. Conscious, it's all questionable. Gentlemen over here. Yeah. The 200 dwellings on the resort. Do you want the microphone? So yes. 200 dwellings on, on the uh, golf resort. 160 executive. Do the other 40 that fall into the affordable housing category? <laughs> 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 Because I've just because I've led to believe that this was only twenty percent of all the housing and any development is that correct or am I talking nonsense? Okay. Um, the, the council has a series of uh, affordable housing policies. Um, there are those apply differently in different parts of the borough 
because they're subject to viability tests. Okay. So, um, in terms of the apartments on the golf resort site, the idea behind those is that some people, when they come to play golf, like to say hotel accommodation. Uh, there are other people who like to come and stay in um, apartment type accommodation um, and that. So the idea is that there would be the apartments for the golfers there and there would also be um, the hotel accommodation. So the apartments are okay. 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 Let's stop. Yeah, it's okay. We, we'll, we'll all draw our conclusions from the answers. Yes, the gentleman with the glasses, just that. Hi, my name is Bill Johnson. Uh, this isn't uh, a question to anyone in particular, it's more of a rhetorical question. Um, the Jack Nicholas Resort say how popular golf is and uh, how people want to come here. Um, but people I know who are members of golf clubs seem to have a declining membership. And I'm nothing against that, I enjoy golf myself. But what I would like to know is, when we got all these golf courses around the world with declining memberships, who would welcome society members, uh, visiting members who'd be adding income to their golf club, why doesn't Wirral Council establish a golf tourism office where we can bring visiting golfers in to the established clubs and also fill up the hotels we've got at the moment? Because we've got a wide range of hotels in this area from the basic sort of Premier Inn, so we're up to Hill Park House and everything in between. And I think that would benefit the area a lot more and generate a lot more employment than some of the phony zero hour contracts and casual labour. I'd just like to address this to maybe the one Labour member here. I've supported the Labour Party all, all my life and it strikes me the Labour councillors who've got at the moment, the only red flags they can see are on the back nine. Let's go and warn people off the puns because people could get into a lot of trouble. Um, Good. Puns and so on. Uh, but I would, um, yeah, okay. I, just as a bit of a thing, and again, I'm trying to be fair. Uh, the camp, it is a good idea, um, it will be passed along, but the tourism, the, the team that do the tourism network, well, a lot of people do an awful lot of good work in, China, in terms of bringing people to Wirral and making sure they get to experience how fantastic it is, just as we who live here do. My general thing about the golf resort these days, um, is actually, it seems to have turned into a housing estate for the golf resort. Yeah. Um, or a golf course. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's called a golf resort, it's a bit of a misnomer, it's more of a housing estate. But anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, All we, I was going to say is a fraction of that money spent on the golf resort could generate a just as much income yeah. by establishing a proper golf tourism. You've yeah. made a very good yeah. point, yeah. and it's been captured. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, any more questions? Lady, I think it's a lady at the back there. The, I can see a watch. That was all. There we go. Yeah, this has been now 17 years in the making. So it makes the Brexit negotiations look like a tea party or something. And um, the roads, the concept of feasibility study for the roads was done by Amy, who famously have felled over 5,000 trees in Sheffield. That. A uh, feasibility study costs 16500 You've spent uh, consultancy, you've spent approaching one and a half million. I'm nothing, you know, and, and, and by the way, since when has it been a fait accompli that the cabinets are going to take an, ex an executive decision that about, <laughs> what's it called, joint, the Nicholas Joint Venture Group, the decision, you can't do that. You can't do that. And the other thing is, this is the very last constituency committee meeting. Um, why? You know, so we're, you're just going to shut everything down now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, um, did you not realise that building on a floodplain, we've had floods, serious flooding in 2015, 2016, 2017, 
2018, the Burkitt has, and the Arrowbrook have flooded their banks several times, up to 60 metres on either side, and you're talking about building on that. Yeah. Not good good point. David, what are we doing about building on floodplains? I thought the government uh, trying to stop us building on floodplains. <laughs> Uh, in terms of all the flooding, environmental and ecology issues which I've spoken about, uh, I think, before, uh, there need to be a series of technical studies done, which the Nicholas Joint Venture Group need to undertake at their cost. Oh, <laughs> need to undertake at their, their cost for the planning application process if they get to that point. Um, all of those studies then are open to be scrutinised by the public and also by all of the statutory consultees and, uh, and people like that. If there are issues coming out of those things, then that's when those matters uh, will need to be dealt with um, and then obviously a decision would have to be made um, through the planning process. Uh, in terms of the points I made uh, earlier about the... Um, the cabinet, as I understand it, with the way that the, the council works legally, um, then it is the cabinet uh, that has the executive decision making function here. I have to check the point that Councillor Green made earlier about the budget side of things. That's something I'm not uh, totally aware of, but would have to check. But as I understand it at the moment, uh, that would be an executive decision for the cabinet of the council. Okay. Right. Can we just hand it Roger, Let me just make sit, it. John, sit down. down. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right. We are reaching the 20 past days. I have been looking around to try and find people lost. So I, I want to give it another 15 minutes. So, but I'm conscious that Jerry has indicated. So I'm going to ask Jerry to make his contribution. Then we'll have a we'll have another go around. So, Jerry. Thanks, Jeff. Now, folks, I'm Councillor Foley, board and president, I have been for the last 21 years. And all this started when, 15, 16 years ago, when, when we had an officer who was called a uh, special projects officer. And he came along to our local Hoylingham West Kerry Committee in Mills and told us he had this wonderful idea, this golf resort. And we thought, that's great, let's go for it. And so we all said, go ahead and find out, tell, tell us some more. But what he didn't tell us was it was going to cost us a very large amount of money, which we were already spending very rapidly. And he didn't tell us, in fact he said the opposite, that he didn't tell us that there were going to be 200 houses built on the old green belt. And he didn't tell us either that the, the public we're not going to have an opportunity of challenging all this because we haven't really had an opportunity. And the fact is, that the whole thing is quite appalling. I started agreeing with the idea, but now I realise it's an absolute false, an absolute rubbish, and it's draining our resources. And I can't understand why the Cabinet are still going ahead and trying to push at this, all the time increasing the costs. Because it's not going to happen, you know. Because at the end of the day, these people are going to go away when they realise the terrible problems of flooding and, and planning applications. And I would bet you that I will, I'm sure it will never happen, but it's costing a lot of money. And the cabinet should realise this, and there's one of them sitting over there as well here. Yeah. I hope he's going to say something about it. The, there is no way that this will ever happen when all these things are taken into account. The planning application, for example, will be called in by the government. It will take, there'll be challenged by everywhere by everybody. And that'll take three or four years to go through, I'm sure. And the flooding, which has been mentioned over here, is always going to be a major factor. And they're going to be having to have water skis, you know, to go through building. How are they going to do this building on this floodplain in the winter? I don't know. Now, what I've asked for, and I asked at the council the other day, is for the leader of the council to make a glorious final gesture because he's leaving the council in May. That's all right, by the way. He's leaving the council in, in May, and he's been the leader of this. And what he could, tomorrow, this week, he could say, look, we've changed our mind, and we're not going to go ahead with the scheme. 
What has appalled me today is to find out from David that they've entered into this agreement without telling councillors anything about it. And there are going to be financial penalties that we're going to have to pay when we walk out of it. And we're, we're dealing with this, um, I'll nearly finish here. We're dealing with this joint venture group, Nicholas. Now, Nicholas himself isn't involved in this, you know. He's an elderly gentleman who's retired from us, but his son is involved in it. And the Nicholas group is actually a short, small group of people, about 10, 10 or 12 of them. They've registered themselves as a company with £1,000 capital. That's all it is when you look at it. How are they going to pay all these costs that you've mentioned over here from their £1,000 capital? I'd love to know. What we've got to do is send a message from here and take every opportunity of telling our cabinet, there's one of them over there, that we don't want this. Let's scrap it before we waste any more money on it because it's costing us far too much money and it'll go on costing us money. And I'm appalled now to find out that somebody somewhere, I'd like to know who it is, David, has signed this agreement saying that if we do drop out, we're going to have to spend thousands, tens of thousands of pounds. That is appalling, and we should have known about it. So let's go out of here, Jeff, and let's all work against this to make sure that this silly, stupid idea doesn't go ahead. Anybody else got a question from the floor? John, you were standing up a few seconds ago. I don't want to lose my green belt question. Well, you won't ask your green belt question. No, later. You want to do it later, do you? Okay. I've got one for here, Can I just... Can you just clarify for people uh, that 56 of the 66 councillors that we elect have no say, no vote, meaningful vote on anything to do with this? To the money. Could you put your hand up if you've got a say in this? Right? Exactly. Yeah. One. Yeah. One. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. One. Okay. All right. Good. The lady at the front here. Yeah. I, I would just like to ask on a personal level. Yes. Um, my local councillor is Philip Brightmore, who yes. I wasn't here tonight, but I'd like to know how he voted at that meeting. Well, in all fairness, and you know, I, he's got a good heart, and I, whilst I believe in political disagreements, I do believe in personal amiability. I think it's the Speaker of the House so, today. Um, and Phil voted to keep the, uh, the golf resort carried on. I'm sure Phil did it. Phil he voted for it. Can I just ask you why he dropped this through my Letterbox. And unfortunately, unfortunately for him, I wasn't there when it came. <laughs> I am committed to defending our NHS and Green Belt. Hang on a sec. Late, the ladies can right. Up, this oh. says, I am committed to defending our NHS, Green Belt, etc., etc. And he voted to, to, to be by Bill Bill's home. What is it? Is he? Is he? Forgetful? Is he? Is he? Is he, is he dishonest? What? He's up for election in May. That, that is. I, well, I, I, no, I mean, not. Look... Anyone, right. yeah. anyone who sent a leaflet out or a card like that saying that they were protecting the green belt, if they voted for. 160 executive homes built slap bang in the green belt, yeah. plus another 60 apartments slap bang in the green belt. I, I, I find it difficult to see how they could argue they're in favour of protecting the green exactly. belt. But, that's, but I'm just trying to be absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gentlemen here, then it's, I think it's going to be the same to some again. Um, yeah, so. Oh, there's a chap right at the back, yeah, okay, cool. Hi, uh, it's Graham Wilson, uh, Pansby. Um, building on my friend's comment before, this faceless cabinet that keeps being referred to consistently, I went to the Wallasey Town Hall the other day, 
There was a comment made by the people standing <clears throat> to say that the decision down there really had no bearing on whether it was going to be built on or not in Hoylake because the cabinet would decide. Now, from the public point of view, where the hell is this cabinet? Because we've got one representative there. Where are the other people? Why can't we lobby them? Because these people won't do anything for us. Well, I said that we can't. I said that we won't. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. We can't. Everybody, right, my understanding is the executive power sits with, with the cabinet. Actually, our point at the council was if the executive see the full weight of the council opposing this, then they would themselves be pressurised to oppose it. So, by the dint of the number of people who signed the petition, by the dint of the argument, by the expression of concern of the council, that would have led the cabinet to take account of that. Because it's the council that appoints the cabinet. So the majority of the council will do that. Labour administration, that's why they have a Labour administration. So for the cabinet to ignore the will of the council, was technically it's the cabinet that would make that decision. Um, I can't believe that cabinet would ignore the majority of the council because it would have had to include members of the Labour Party to vote for it. So whatever they said to you, whilst it's technically and legally correct, in reality, I don't believe the cabinet could have ignored the uh, will of the council. We do have a cabinet member here and he can tell us whether if the council had decided the Labour administration would have needed Labour help. Well, I believe they were whipped on the basis of if they voted they'd be thrown out. Uh, but if the council had taken a view, it was opposed that we're the golf resort, would the cabinet have decided not to go ahead with the golf resort? And we've got Stuart, who is listed in the paper as a future Labour leader of the council, so I understand it. Uh, so he's well placed to give us that answer, Stuart, if you wouldn't mind. So, yes, there's. So, so the cabinet is 10 people, 10 councillors who are also elected members who also you know, put themselves you know, before the people uh, of the world they represent once every four years. Uh, I'm a, a multi councillor. Um, certainly, it's no way, it's a place of company. Nothing's been decided. Um, oh, you signed up to it. Well, let's be fair. Let's be fair to everybody. The development agreement has been signed, and the the, fa the final decision, whether or not the council go to the continuous support the public coverage us, will be made in the future uh, in the future days. David, Dave, David indicates uh, you know it could be June, July. Certainly not it it pays a company um, as elected members. Uh, and by the way, the cabinet meetings are held in public, so every single one of you can come along and, and see how it works. Um, Do you support it? Yes, he did. He voted for it to carry on. Right, so, 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 so basically, so it's in our face of company. Um, as the elected members, we've got a duty to look at all the evidence uh, and, and take everyone's views into account uh, prior to making a decision, which will. What will okay. I think the question was, would the cabinet, as you're a member of it, ignore the will of the council? Uh, and just to be absolutely even-handed, so I know Phil has put that, Phil Brightmore has put that uh, out, even though he voted in council, to suggest he had no other option. Jean, who's a councillor for Upton, and I thought very courageously voted against the golf. Yeah. Uh, This rumour is true, Jim, but I heard the conversation went with the whips, the Labour whips, and the like. I've been opposed to this right the way along. I've told people I'm opposed to it, and I'm going to vote against it. Is that is that broadly how it went? If you want to say a couple of things? Uh, nothing, nothing to say. Alright, okay, alright. But I'm sure that the, the public are very appreciative of what you did, so thank you for that. Right, I'm going to bring this to a, a relatively quick end, Phil. Very quick. So I'm going to let I'm, I'm going to let the chap at the back who had his hand up 
and ask the question we fall. You were trying to get in, weren't you? No, okay. Straight to Phil in that case. Oh, that, that gentleman there. Though. Just, yeah, the last two, I'm sure there'll be colleagues who want to just wrap this up and then we'll finish this and we'll try and get into something close to public question time. Yeah, okay, there you go. Hi, am I on? Thank yes, you. Oh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, two quick questions. One is just for a bit of clarification. Uh, when you say that the um, scrutiny of this will go forward to the committee, is this the same process that we saw the fire station built, green belt? Yeah. Yeah. Is this the same committee that will vote as they want, even against the advice of the Environment Overview and Scrutiny Committee? Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And can I ask my second question? That's, thank you. That's all we need. No, no, it's not correct. Sorry. Sorry, if I could just uh, clarify in answer to the gentleman's question. Um, in terms of the Celtic Manor Resort, so what will happen is the funding and phasing plan will be assessed and then we'll submit that in a report to one of the scrutiny committees, probably the business scrutiny committee, and that scrutiny committee will then make a series of recommendations to the cabinet and then the cabinet will take a decision on the golf resort project. Now, the, the other thing that you referred to there regarding the fire station is different because the fire station was a planning application. David, I don't want to upset you, so because uh, you're absolutely dead straight, but actually the council had to agree to sell the land to yeah, yeah, the yeah, fire station. Yeah, yeah. Before, before it got to before he got to planning, so it got to yeah, before he got to planning, there was a decision that was made. And the gentleman asked, will it be the cabinet that makes the decision? Yeah. Yes, it will. Will it end up being built or not? There will be a planning uh, impact. So the answer I gave was broadly okay. correct. Thank you. Yeah. The second question yeah. yeah. so, 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 yeah. so I think it's worth pointing out the reason the fire station was bought in the first place was because of fire service cuts. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Stewards, 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 stewards. We've tried, I've tried to, to, and I think we've broadly succeeded. This has been, a, there's been disagreement, but it's been done amicably. And that's the way I want to keep it. I don't think there's any need to start blustering and trying to make this highly politicised in order to get away from the scrutiny of the decisions that you and the cabinet have taken. Phil, yeah, I've still got oh, well, come on then. Very it's taking up from what Jerry said before that this, the, the Jack Nicholas Group have got £1,000 funding. I believe that it's rumoured that the council are going to finance to the tune of £26 million pounds right. if right. that company yeah. goes bust with only £1,000 behind them. There's a strong chance that they might. Uh, who wants to pay that £26 million? Pounds? Okay. All right. David, do you have an answer to that? <laughs> yes. So the, the way the project would work if the council decides to give the prudential borrowing as a loan to part from the project is that that loan would be secured against the houses that would be built there and by Bednall as the house builder. So, so that doing it in that way, you have um, opportunities to manage any risks and you wouldn't do the arrangement directly with the Nicholas Joint Venture Group, but you would do it with the house builder and the houses and you would structure it from a commercial perspective in that way. Uh, so, broadly speaking, I don't think there was a clear answer to that. But, we, but the council taxpayer, fundamentally, as always, will be the local 
last resort. So we have been left holding any, um, any liability. Phil, this is the last contribution from the floor. I think everyone will agree we've given it a, a wide uh, opportunity. Uh, well, just to start with, I'm, I'm disappointed uh, Councillor Brightmore isn't here because I do not want to talk about what he's up to and what he's doing without him being there face to face. But I presume that after this meeting, any questions you or any decision you're going to go back and then try and formulate them somewhere else. Uh, we've heard a lot about the cabinet tonight, cabinet this, cabinet that. But just before I go on to that, Stuart, the uh, fire station, four consultants firms paid for by the council to do the, the uh, regeneration of Hoylake and West Kirby. The fire service wanted to keep that fire station in West Kirby. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't believe that, look well, at the documents of two Stuart, Stuart. Anyway, Come on. I'm not here for that. Um, we've got three Labour councillors here tonight. We've got one cabinet member. Uh, as has been said, Jean is the only one that voted against the golf resort. The other two voted for it. Why did Philip Brightmore vote for it? Because he's up for election in May. And he goes back to December 2017. On the 18th of December, he voted to progress the Hoylake Golf Resort and that goes with all the economic uh, things that go with it. He also did it in September, on the 10th of September 2018. He did it on the 10th of December 2000, uh, 2018. And he did it on the 25th of February 2019. Yeah. On each occasion, he voted to progress the Hoylake Golf Resort, yeah, yeah. as did our two members here tonight. <coughs> Kate Cannon, Councillor Cannon, she is Pensby Thingwall Councillor. She has been seen on the leaflets with Philip Brightmore, uh, saying to his residents, I want to protect every blade of grass uh, on the green belt. Yeah, yeah. You've ju I've just told you how he's voted every single time as a council meeting. He's voted to progress that golf resort, 160 houses, uh, a £17 million road, 40 apartments, and a little question for David Rear. We met you, David, last year, or the year before, when this first kicked off. And by the way, we've met with every political group on the Whittle. The only group that won't meet with us are the Labour yeah. councillors. Yeah. 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 David, when we met with you, I asked you, I've asked you three times about the 160 houses, and to be fair, you have said 160 only. Can you tell me when those 40 apartments came into the frame, please? Um, and the date, if you would. Um, but we'll go back to the election for this May and Councillor Brighton, I, I, I don't like saying too much because he's not here, I'd love to do it face to face. I have seen him face to face but he just walks off because he knows that if he is voting to progress not just the Oil Lake Golf Resort but the 160 houses, the road, as I've said before, 40 apartments, all on Greenbelt. So how can he possibly tell his residents that he's going to protect every blade of grass on that green belt? Somebody is giving out misinformation and it is not us. Because everything I'm telling you tonight, you can check either via John Brace's videos or even the council's own uh, website. We've been accused of, from Phil Davis,